If you're on Windows and you want to talk to Microsoft SQL Server, then SQL Server Management Studio is really ideal for doing that. But if you're on a different platform like Macintosh or Linux, or you want to talk to a different database in addition to SQL Server, um, there are a couple of different options you have. And I'm going to take you through using a product by JetBrains called Data Grip. Now, you may know JetBrains from some of your, some of your other classes. Um, they make IntelliJ for Java development and PHP Storm for PHP web development and WebStorm and uh, Android Studio and a bunch of other um, integrated development environments. And they have one for doing SQL development as well. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the process of installing that in this video. And in the next video, I'll show you some of the features. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, search for JetBrains student. Now JetBrains has a deal where if you have a PCC email address, you can get a one year free license to use any of their products. And this is renewable um, for as long as you have your PCC email address, um, which is actually a great deal because they have a lot of good stuff here. Um, so I'm going to actually, let me agree with this first. Um, so I'm going to show you this page. Um, first step is to register for student account so that you can get access to all the products. Um, basically, you just click the apply now, you fill out the form, they send you a confirm email, and you're good to go. And after you've taken care of that, you can actually download Data Grip. So I'm going to go ahead and search for, actually, let me search here for Data Grip. And actually, um, I usually do this through Google, so let me do that here. Data Grip, download. And so here's the download page for Data Grip. And I'm on Mac OS. I'm going to hit the download button. And this will take a while to download depending on how fast your connection is. It's actually not that big, 180 megabytes. So, Okay, so it's downloaded. It wasn't too bad, a couple of minutes over here. Um, so I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And I should have a datagrip.dmg file. Let me open that up. And drag and drop into the Applications folder. OK, so let's go ahead and uh, eject the data grep virtual drive and go to Applications. And I should have data grip up here. I'm going to go ahead and run it. And I want to open it. Oh, and it's actually, I think it's there. Yeah, there it is. So I'm not going to import settings. I'll accept the terms of the license. I have to scroll to the bottom and then accept. And I'm not going to send usage statistics. So um, if you've created your account, you should be able to activate it with your JetBrains account. And so I'm going to enter my email address and my password. And it worked. So I have a license until April 12th of 2019. Um, and I can renew that when it expires. And I'm just going to use the default theme here. I prefer light personally. Most programmers like the dark one. But And then I'll take the defaults for the IDE. 
and start using data grip. Preferred dialect for SQL files, you can leave this as generic SQL if you're going to be using it for a bunch of different um, databases, but for this class we're just using SQL Server, so I'm just going to go ahead and set that as my preferred dialect. That will just affect the defaults. You can override it in any project you create. So I'll start using data grip. Great, so let me make this a little bigger. And I'm gonna click on that pane to open it. So in data grip, there's two separate things. There's a connection. Um, it's actually a data source that you manage that involves a connection to the database. And then there's a SQL file where your queries live. And you can select queries from the SQL file and then you can execute them using the data source. And so all of this stuff will live in a project. And so the first thing I want to do is add a data source to my project. So I'm starting with an empty project, basically. If you look at the file menu, um, you see some options, but uh, there's a data source um, item here that you can get to. But basically, I'm just going to do it from here because it's easy. So I'm just going to hit that plus sign. And I want to add a new data source. The type of data source I'm adding is a SQL Server data source. And we're going to be connecting to a copy of the database, an instance of the database that's running at PCC. And we'll be using that throughout this class. So the idea here is that your database application, DataGrip, is going to connect to a server under the PCC domain We'll send queries to that server and then get results back that will be displayed here in this application. So the first thing we want to do is we want to fill in the host where the database server is running, cisdbss.pcc.edu. And then you can specify an initial database to connect to as well. Um, it's not sticky, so you can switch from database to database to database across the same connection, but having this set as the default is handy. And so for this data source, I'm going to use the names database, which is running on the database server at cisdbss.pcc.edu. And then you're also going to want to specify username and password. So for this class, we're going to use 275 student for the username. And then the password is exactly the same, 275 oops, student. Type that again. I was talking and typing 275. OK, so that should be it. Um, now, you'll notice at the bottom, the first time you run this, you hit, might have download missing driver files. And so if you click on that, it will automatically download the file that data grip needs to connect to the server. And then it will show us no objects after that, which is what you want. So we're going to go ahead and say, OK. And then in this pane shows up a data source. And there's also a console window that I can type commands into. But I'm not going to do that because I want to keep my queries in a separate file. So let's go into the File menu and say New SQL File. And uh, it's asking me to give it a name. So I'm going to call it example.sql and say OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this as. And then the target directory, I actually want to go all the way up to my Documents folder. So I'm going to go to Documents and just save it here in Documents. Move this up a little bit here. So example.sql in my documents folder. And then I can start typing commands into this SQL file here. So the first thing I'm going to do is use names. And that's telling the connection what database I want to use for my subsequent queries. By default, for this particular data source, it's going to be names as well. But I can also switch this by using a different use statement. And we'll see that in a while. And then for testing purposes, I'm going to start with select top 50, whoops, 50 star from 
all underscore data semicolon. So that's all I need to write um, to execute the query. Um, now this SQL file, I need to associate it with a data source to actually execute it. And so here's my data source. The way I do that is the SQL server here. Um, actually, SQL server is the default language. Under console, actually it says names.db. Um, so actually I should be okay there. Yeah, so I just select that. And then I can also select database. Um, right now there's nothing showing, but let me go ahead and execute this query. So when you click this little run sign, now I have some options. I can run the currently selected query, or basically this is going to be the whole thing. And so I'm going to run this whole thing here. And what I get is a result set. So this result set is displayed as a grid, just like a spreadsheet. Um, I have a bunch of columns and I have a bunch of rows. And I have 50 rows for the first 50 rows in the all data table. So that means everything is working. In the next video, I'll show you a few helpful, um, I'll show you a few helpful things that you can do in DataGrip.